Good morning, Kingsway. I'm Rick Ballou, Stewardship Director. I'm happy to be here today, and to get things started, I'd like to share some of our announcements. First off, our online Connect card is a great way to get connected and to let us know that you're worshiping with us today. We invite you to fill this out at kwumc.com connect. We are so excited for our outdoor worship services on Sunday, August 30th and September 6th at 6 p.m. We'll be worshiping through song and hear a brief message. We ask that everyone wear a mask uh, from your car until you're in your seat and distanced. Bring your lawn chairs and we'll see you in the shaded area on the south parking lot by the playground. You can find our full outdoor protocol linked on the homepage of our website. Speaking of outdoors, don't forget we're now able to offer gathering spaces for our Kingsway Connectional Groups. If you would like to schedule a time to meet, please contact Catherine Barty at kbart at kwumc.com or just call the church office at 881-6363. Don't forget, today following our stream worship, we are having a drive-up communion service anytime between 10 and noon in the north parking lot just outside the sanctuary. Included in that worship will have a blessing of the backpacks, the presentation of third grade Bibles, and there will also be a collection point for food offerings for the Wilder Backpack Ministry. We can't wait to share this great opportunity with you. And now, let us continue by preparing our hearts for worship. Good morning, friends, and welcome to worship here at Kingsway. My name is Pastor Scott Vons, and just excited to be with you. As we prepare to worship, uh, let us begin with our call to worship and pastoral prayer. Unless you change and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. We come here seeking change. We come here, each of us a child of God, to recognize our dependence on God. Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me welcomes not just me, but the one who sent me. We come here to welcome the children everywhere in God's name. Beloved, we are God's children now. We come here as children of God, secure in God's love, urged to work for God's justice, bound in one family to care for one another. Come, let us worship the God on whom we rely, the God who bids us to welcome the children, the God who claims us all as God's children. Amen. Amen. Every week we provide an opportunity to pray. Many of things go on in our lives and go on in our world. I want to specifically mention the McAdoo family. Sydney passed away this week, and so just be praying for that family. Uh, this week, uh, here in Springfield at least, students are going back to school and teachers and administrators. We still continue to think of and pray for all of our frontline workers and who are working very hard to keep us safe, city officials, government officials who are just rapidly and, and uh, daily responding to uh, COVID-19 and how best to respond as well to keep us safe. So many things going on, people losing jobs. Um, people suffering, uh, food insecurity, all kinds of issues in our world. And I, I don't know what's going on in your life and what's going on in your heart today, but we do want to invite you that if there is something that you would like the pastoral staff or the staff in general to pray for, you can go on to the website at www.kwumc.com and fill out our Connect and Prayer card, and we will be happy uh, and would love to be able to know about those things and pray with you and for you. So as we uh, prepare to worship, will you pray with me? Jesus, thank you for this day, this day that brings its own unique set of circumstances and challenges and trials uh, and even joys, uh, so many things that we don't even know yet are going to happen, but we know that you go before us and you are present with us in all of these things. You are present with us in our pain. You're present with us in our suffering. You're present with us in our joy. And we know that as your word says, that while you don't cause all things, you do work all things for good. 
Uh, so, Lord, we just pray that you would use all of these things that are going on um, for, uh, for the advancement of your kingdom on earth, um, for uh, the advancement of your gospel in our world and in our nation and in our communities, uh, Lord, but that you might use us specifically as your children of God to be your hands and your feet through our experiences and the things that we're going through. So, Lord, for those suffering loss, we pray that you are present with them. For those uh, just out there working to keep us safe and to make decisions and educate our children and and all of those things, Lord, we pray that you would keep them safe, you would give them wisdom and discernment, um, and that all of these things might bring joy to families, might bring joy to the students, and that we might be better together than we are apart. Uh, So, Lord, we just pray over this time um, that those listening, our hearts and our ears, might receive what you might be saying to us today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning, Kingsway friends. I'm Stephanie McCormick, the Director of Children's Ministries here. And in our story today from Luke 18, Jesus is trying to bless the children and welcome them, but his disciples aren't happy about it. In fact, Jesus said, come to me, and the children ran to Jesus. But the people around Jesus said, stop. But Jesus said, come to me, and the children ran to him, and Jesus blessed them. While children are the focus of these verses, they are the only people in the story who actually do or say nothing for themselves. They're brought by their parents, they're blocked by the disciples, and they're uh, prayed and blessed upon by Jesus. And Jesus said, of all the people in this story, we should be like the children. We should go where the Father wills, trusting in his love, his blessings, and his wisdom. Now, I know that lots of different artists have done renderings of this story, but when I found this one, to me, it just seems like that would be how Jesus would be. If you look, you can see him smiling and laughing, and the kids are climbing all over him. And if you look, even the dog is smiling. So I think when I think of this story, this is exactly how I picture this in my head. When Jesus said that we should think like a little child, it means not expecting to know everything. It means not wanting to be the best all the time. But instead, we trust that God has all the answers and that he will help us in his time. So, boys and girls, I know it can be tough to be a kid. Uh, Your bedtime is usually early. Sometimes you can't watch the same movies that everyone else watches. Um, You want to drive or have a job. But Jesus says people of all ages should come to him and trust him. And he thinks that kids are great. Isn't that awesome? Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your work in our lives. We ask for your trust and faith in your goodness and to give us humility and understanding for others. Help us to be more like children and to do your will and not our own. We thank you, God, for the opportunities to share your love with others. And Lord, we think kids are pretty amazing too. Amen.
soul of one dark blood blood to thee whose blood can cleanse each spot of God I As we come to worship this day, and in the days of the past couple of months as we have come to worship, we have found ourselves coming in a way that is different than we have traditionally come as a church, as a church being King's Way. But I, each week, am moved that... We have a body who still joins together, that we have a group of volunteers and staff who give of their time to make this service, at whatever point you see it, available and life-giving. My name is Reverend Karen Hayden. I am one of the pastors here, and it is a joy to have you with us again this day in our third week of our series, Better Together. We have looked at Ecclesiastes 4 and remembered a cord of three strands is not easily broken. Matthew 18, where two or three are gathered because of me, you will be sure I am there As we remember those words of Jesus, let us pray together. God, you are there, you are here, and we come. May we hear what you would have us to hear or see this day. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, when a story is told in the Synoptic Gospels, those are three books in the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, three of the four Gospels, when something is mentioned in all of those, I take notice. If all three seek to include the same story, there's got to be a reason, a lesson there. And today we hear 
one of those stories from Luke's perspective. Once again, here is a story where Jesus reminds us of the significance of the company we keep. Or better yet, the significance of whom we ought not exclude from our company. Today, that means children. That seems obvious, right? A church shouldn't exclude children. <clears throat> but I invite you to hear the subtleties. Sometimes we regard children as distractions. When we're talking about the important work of the reign of God. But here Jesus puts children in the center. Biblical interpreters agree on one thing in this story. In a day and a culture where children were on the bottom of society, almost considered less than human, Jesus performed no more radical, countercultural act than when he put children at the center, making them the enactment of good news here today. What Jesus said about children here today is similar to what Jesus says about the poor, the marginalized, and the least of these, that they have value, that they are the sacred in our midst. So here from Luke 18 today, now they were bringing even infants to him that he might touch them. And when the disciples saw it, they rebuked him. But Jesus called to him, saying, Let the children come to me, and do not hinder them, for to such belongs the kingdom of God. Truly I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child shall not enter it. For the gift of Scripture, thanks be to God. This is one of those famous scenes in the New Testament. Stephanie named how it is often pictured with Jesus, often on a rock with children all around him. Sometimes, though, they leave out one little detail, and that's infants. Because here, Scripture uses the same word that the baby in a manger would have been used. So we know that there are infants here. A mob of parents are with these children. They're thrusting their babies toward Jesus that he might touch them. The children are small. In the Greco-Roman world, children were thought very little of, maybe because of the high child mortality rate. So sometimes maybe parents just weren't getting attached to the children that they might lose. Regardless, children were considered of lesser value. So I can just imagine... One day, Jesus is teaching, and gathered round him are his disciples, and a couple of children scuffle up in the dust. Some parents come bringing their children to Jesus, and one of the disciples says, can't something be done about this? Isn't there a nursery for these kinds of people? And what did Jesus say? Let the children come to me. Embracing them in his arms, Jesus is saying, the kingdom of God belongs to children. Grown-ups have difficulty getting into a kingdom with such a small door. So the disciples, like us, can get things turned around. They tried to shield Jesus from children. I can hear them. Important matters lie ahead. We've got to get to Jerusalem. There are bigger controversies. God's business is being constructed. Let's get these children out of here so we can be about God's business. It's as, it is as if investing time and attention on them brings no immediate dividend. Children underfoot can delay the kingdom. But Jesus rebuked the disciples. No matter their age or status, 
Jesus is not too important. Jesus is not too busy, too powerful for children. In fact, it's just the opposite. He values and loves children and seeks to bless them. Now, the disciples shouldn't have missed this. This was not a new approach by God. God has always welcomed children. We could look at passage after passage after passage in the Old Testament. From the beginning of the people of God, the covenant community has consisted of both believers and the children. Children in Israel received a sign and seal of the covenant community almost at birth in circumcision. They attended the covenant meals and participated in covenant worship. As members of the covenant community, they engaged in the life of that community in the very presence of God that they might receive a blessing. So Christ is not doing anything new here. He's reminding children are a part of the family of faith. They're allowed, encouraged even, to come near to God and receive his blessings and grace. Jesus' concern for the little ones or the powerless ones is ultimate. Now, I want to note for just a second why these parents would have been bringing their children to Jesus. Jesus had a reputation. Not just because of his healing touch, but also a quality in him that assured them that their children would be valued. The idea of his love and care for all children is where we get our theological criteria for the church, meaning how we know God through the church. God loves children. Created by God, all children are bearers of God's image. So no matter what your age, hear that. You are a bearer of God's image. You are a reflection of God to the world. All children are a part of the priesthood of believers and should be ministers in the body of Christ. But sadly, sometimes the church is not child-friendly, and here I mean children of a young age. And yet we know one of the distinguishing marks of the church is the presence, the active presence of children. Anybody know the average age of a congregant in the United Methodist Church? 58. The proportion of those under 12 in the United Methodist Church is on a precipitous decline. But I've never thought we should have children in the church as self-preservation. It isn't about how we can replace our adult selves with children. Rather, it is about bringing children to Jesus that they might know Jesus and teach us. However... Currently, only a tiny proportion of North American children receive introduction or instruction in the Christian faith. Despite what we remember of decades ago, now it is true that most of the children do not receive instruction in the Christian faith. This is not who Kingsway is. We value discipleship, Christian education. It is important, though, to hear what is happening in culture lest we slip into those same habits. Today, we are celebrating the children in our midst. We are blessing them through the backpacks that they use in their everyday education we bless our educators today of all different ages and ranges. 
We offer third grade Bibles for the instruction through our church and through church in the home to teach our children. So discipleship has been a guiding principle in the past years at Kingsway. Still, we've got to keep asking, how do we do discipleship? More specifically, this past year, we looked at what does our process of discipleship look like? When someone comes into our midst, how are they formed in discipleship pathways? Really, that's two questions. How is it that we follow the way of Jesus And how do we lead others to follow Christ? So we looked at all of our areas of discipleship this past year. Specifically, our children's and family ministries. We had some big initiatives planned for spring 2020. Those initiatives did not include COVID-19. So I remember being very bitter on some of the days when I knew those benchmarks came and went when we were not able to meet in person. Today was to be the launch of an enhanced program. In July, I kept looking at this day longingly on the calendar. I was grieving what wouldn't be. Then one night... After a heart-to-heart with God and the leaders of this church, I went to bed asking, what if? What if this whole season of distancing isn't a death sentence to our children's ministries, but what if it is a renewal? As we begin to move back into a season of education, how might we look with the eyes of Jesus at our children in ministry, maybe this COVID unraveling, maybe the exposure that COVID has given each of us in our lives and in our churches might actually be the launch pad for what comes next. Perhaps this is a defining moment for our 60-some-year-old church and all of its members. How are we a part of discipleship making? Like, just because you haven't uh, a name tag that says uh, children's uh, Sunday school leader does not mean you get off of discipleship making. Because as we are having leaders teach our children, we have leaders teaching our leaders, and it becomes this beautiful concentric circle of discipleship making. Just the other day, I was taught the expression, parenting forward. The idea of being with children and imagining what is not yet, not yet, and striving for it, That is our call as a church, imagining what is not yet with our children and striving for it. Along with the idea that we are the image of God, Imago Dei, the Christian sacrament of baptism aids the church in shifting from a view of ministry for the children to a ministry with the children. Ministry with the children compels the congregations to be communities which support and equip families in their daily livings, not just reserved for an hour or two on Sunday. This can be done by showing families and congregations how to be attentive to the ministry of the church. And the idea that children are image bearers of God promotes the message that children are ministers among us. Being attentive to the ministry of children allows them, the children, to minister from the depths of who they are and how they were created. Children, like adults, 
are created in vastly different ways, and ministry with children should encourage and empower each child to use their giftedness in ministry. I see gifts of ministry in the children all around me. Children of all ages and stages of life. As children of God, we know that discipleship is something. We don't ever just check off in a box. In this lifetime, we never finish our spiritual growth. There is always something more to learn. That is what is so exciting about this lesson today. The disciples see in the inclusion of children that there is more that they have to learn too. Christian, Kristen Tippett, an award-winning public radio host, begins all of her interviews with this question. What is the spirituality of your childhood? Whatever the subject of the interview, she has determined this to be the most revealing question that will provoke her guests to share some of themselves with the audience. The spiritual landscape of our childhood harbors our deepest desires. If that isn't something to think about when we think about the theology of the church and what we are to do as discipleship makers, if that isn't something to think about when we ask ourselves, who is in my circle of influence? Who do we have teaching us to be a disciple? So I've said children are born as spiritual beings. They are born as spiritual beings with innate spiritual compasses. They are gifted and ready to offer us teaching. So how do we include them in our circles? Lately, one of my children, who turned seven this week, who happens to have beautiful rich brown skin, has been noticing signs all around town. The first time she saw one, she came to me and said, Mom, come and see. There is a sign that says, Black Lives Matter. They see me, and they know me. She counts signs now. Everywhere we go, as she sees them, for her, these are markers, signs that say she matters, that she is known. For all of the controversy that some say the Black Lives Inclusion Awareness Movement has brought in one child, I have seen it bring sacred worth. And for that, I give thanks. Because you know, when children see others valued, it gives them a sense of value. When we name the sacred in the lives around us, children see the sacred in themselves. And they, the children, become our greatest teachers. We are better together. Children, parents, mentors, educators. So let the children come that we might find the sacred and know Jesus. In Cindy Wong's Parenting Forward book, there's a story of Joy Neal. Joy tells of a conversation she had with her son, Ander, age six. Joy asked Ander, what do you know about God? Well, he said, I know that God is loving. That is all I know for sure so far. Let the children come. Amen.
I will be sharing some selected paragraphs from Rob Bell's When We Talk About God to introduce communion today. As United Methodists, we come to a shared table, a table that extends beyond this altar, a table that extends beyond our parking lot at noon today. We share in a table that extends to all of the sacred and holy in our world. One might think sacred and holy is in short supply these days. Not true. Just like the gift of the spiritual and the children among us, we can find God all around us. And now we come to the Lord's table where again all children are invited We come to the Lord's table to confess our sin that we may be at peace. When we confess our sinful ways, God abundantly pardons. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are all forgiven. Glory to God. Now let us pursue the things that make for peace and build up our common life. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, surrounded by his followers, eating a last meal, he gave them bread and wine, telling them that the ordinary foods were his body and blood, telling them that wherever they gathered and took the bread and wine, it would be an enduring experience of new life that he was giving them through his life his death, and resurrection. In doing this, he was treating common bread and wine as sacred because for him, all of bread and wine were holy and sacred. And all bread and wine are sacred to him because all life is sacred and holy. And that includes interactions, events, tasks, conversations, work, classes, jobs. The ancient sages say that when Moses came to the burning bush, he doesn't take off his sandals because suddenly the ground has become holy. He takes off his sandals because he's realizing now that the ground has been holy. God was there the whole time. You're on holy ground wherever you are. Even right now, even whenever it is that you are viewing this service, and Jesus comes to prepare a meal. He comes to heighten our senses and sharpen our eyes to that which we've been surrounded by the whole time. So do you see the good news? In a world where we currently require physical distancing, we recognize God is not distant. God reaches out to us in Jesus to offer us life. God calls us out in Jesus Christ to bring forward and lead children, reminders of how sacred things are among us. And so we come to the table exactly as we are, some days on top of the world, and some days we come just getting by. Some days we feel like a number, like a cog in the machine, severed and separated by the depth of things. Other day we come feeling tuned into the song, fully alive, hyper aware of the God who is in all. The point of the experience isn't to create a place where God is over against the rest of life where God isn't. No, the power of this meal is striking. It opens our eyes again and again, and again, to the holiness and sacred nature of all life. From family, to friends, to neighbors, to money, to breath, and sex, and work, and play, and food, and wine, that God is in it all, bringing all of our souls and spirits that make us, us, together in God's presence. Even now, thanks be to God. 
Holy God, in remembrance of all you have done to save us, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ has come among us. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ abides with us, and Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and cup. Make them be for us, Christ's body, alive in the world. This we pray in Jesus' name, who taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now, aware of the presence of God among us, we respond as thankful people. We come in a moment or in an hour or two to receive consecrated elements. And we come to give to our partner Wilder Elementary School's backpack program food. We come to give of ourselves, our service, our time, and generously of our finances as we are able to our church that we might share with the world the love of Christ. Amen.
better together and so we invite you to come together for a time of communion where we might share in a drive-through experience in our north parking lot where you might receive a blessing we acknowledge now that the table is set Jesus is here might you meet Jesus here so that together we may take Jesus there. Amen.